Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach has served in the United States Air Force with distinction for almost 19 years. He's logged more than 2,000 flying hours and nearly 1,500 fighter hours. He has flown 400 combat hours, including the longest sorties in the history of his squadron. Colonel Fehrenbach estimates that the military has spent $25 million training him. But in 2008, he was outed as a gay man by a civilian. That began the long process of getting fired, or as the Pentagon likes to put it, um, separated from the military. Today, Colonel Fehrenbach is still awaiting word on whether he can continue to serve as an active duty airman. Next month, he will celebrate his 19th anniversary in the Air Force with only one more year until retirement, if he makes it that far. Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach joins us now for the interview from Boise, Idaho. Colonel Fehrenbach, thank you very much for coming back on the show. It's good to see you. Thank you, Rachel. Good to see you. Um, it's been about 15 months since you found out you were being recommended uh, for an honorable discharge. What's the status of your case right now? Um, the latest update we had was it arrived in the office of the Secretary of the Air Force um, in early May, and we were told then it would go through one final legal review, um, and then that recommendation would move forward to the Secretary of the Air Force. At the time, um, we expected that would be about two to three weeks, and uh, if you can do the math, it's been about eight or nine weeks since we were told that, so that review is taking a lot longer than we originally expected. Does that The fact that it, it is taking longer than expected, does that give you hope that you won't be discharged? Do you know how to interpret this delay? No, I don't, because uh, you know this, the case has been reviewed uh, by multiple layers already. Um, we did uh, request to meet personally my legal team with the Secretary of the Air Force. We were turned down twice. We also requested that my legal team appear before this review board so that they could present some of our um, legal concerns on how my case was handled. Uh, again, we were, we were turned down on all those requests, but we were able to put forward a legal brief that uh, showed all of our concerns there. Um, but I, we're not sure if th that just means that they're really taking our, our uh, arguments seriously and they're taking a long time to review this. And we also don't know if they're taking extra time because uh, Secretary Gates, as you know, announced uh, new, more lenient, more humane enforcement standards in March. So maybe they're taking the extra time to apply those standards. We hope so. Um, as you know, those standards, some of the things he announced, he, uh, my case meets all of those standards. Uh, for instance, it was not credible information that was presented. It was not from a reliable source. And uh, my chain of command did not take into consideration how that information was gained. Um, and then finally, it, there was clearly malicious intent involved uh, by the person who outed me. So my case should be, you know, basically the poster case for the new enforcement standards. My case meets every one of those criteria so that really the Air Force has the opportunity to do the right thing here, to dismiss my case and to retain me. And I hope they do that under these new enforcement standards. It sounds like with all of those variables in play, and obviously you know everything there is to know about your own case, you know as much as any of us do about the status of the policy and what's going on internally at the Pentagon here. I imagine being in this kind of limbo for this long um, must be really stressful, is it? Oh, it's extremely stressful, Rachel. I mean, I, I, I thank God every day I get to put on the uniform and I get to continue to do my job. But uh, at the same time, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get the phone call tomorrow that'll say, "Hey, next Friday is your last day of service," and uh, and you know, I don't ha I don't know how I'll, I'll react to that. So it's it's pretty hard to to continue to do my job, uh, knowing and being under that stress that I I don't know when my last day will eventually be. We've talked a couple of times since uh, your case initially became known publicly, and I've asked you this then, and I'm just asking you again now because I want to know if it's still the case. Is there any issue in your unit with the men and women that you serve with, with them serving alongside you in uniform with you now as an openly gay man? Is there any issue? No, none whatsoever, and, and I know we've talked about this before. In fact, two weeks after I was on your program, you know, one of the issues they talk about is how will this affect retention and recruiting. Well, I had a master sergeant in my squadron approach me, and he asked me personally to do his reenlistment. He asked me to readminister his oath and sign his paperwork to reenlist him. He didn't ask the squadron commander, and he didn't ask his immediate supervisor. He asked me. Um, I was I was honored by that, um, and I was glad to do it. And since that time, again, my my unit has been nothing but professional. They've been dedicated to the mission. They have proven that this survey, this study, doesn't need to go on for 10 months. I can invite the, the people as part of this working group to come work with me tomorrow. You don't need a hypothetical study or survey. You can come to work and, with me and see real airmen, real warriors who, who care about the mission and only care that I'm able to do my job.
There's been controversy about some of the survey questions since uh, the survey first went out a few days ago. I know that you've seen uh, what's on the survey. Do you have any reaction to it? Do you think it's uh, necessary, unnecessary? Do the questions bother you? Um, the questions uh, in particular, a, a couple of them, I think, um, well, I would just say that they, I don't want to say they're insulting, but, you know, there are things in combat that we just don't think about. You think about where your next meal is going to come from. You think about your next mission. Uh, you think about your family back home, and you just don't think about who's showering next to you. It's uh, questions like that that got specific um, seem somewhat insulting. Um, I think the survey is unnecessary completely because, for one reason, um, you know, 24 of our allies have already ended their bans, and so they've already looked at these issues that we have to address, and they've implemented effective solutions. So all we need to do is call the United Kingdom, call Israel, uh, find out how they address these problems or these issues that came forward um, and, and implement sim similar solutions. Um, and secondly, like I said, you can come to work tomorrow and, and, and you can see that real uh, airmen, real warriors don't care about uh, my personal private life. They only care that I'm able to do my job and able to execute the mission. And then the last point I want to make is this survey is unprecedented. You know, um, if we wanted to see if everybody was comfortable, you know, we could ask them if they wanted to go home for Christmas or stay in a tent in Afghanistan, and you'd probably get 90% that said they'd rather go home for Christmas. And, and nobody asked me if I was comfortable while I was getting shot at eight times over Baghdad. Nobody asked me if I was comfortable in my 13-hour mission over Afghanistan. Um, so, you know, the survey is unprecedented. In 1948, when we integrated the armed services, uh, President Truman didn't take a survey to do that. He did it because it was the right thing to do. Um, and in the 70s and, and in the 90s, when we integrated women into the academies and into combat units. Again, we didn't take a survey. We did it because it was the right thing to do, and our military was, became stronger because of it. Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach, who soon may be a 20-year veteran of the Air Force. Uh, Victor, thank you for taking the trip to talk to us, and thanks for sharing your story. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, Rachel.